Hey guys, today I am going to talk about PR. Uh, PR is something that we offer at my marketing agency. It's a very small marketing agency, so we're not doing like Epstein levels of PR. We're just doing really just, I mean, if my best examples would be, hey, a dad has a son and the son is not able to get into the high school he wants because the dad has been accused of, let's call it murder and there has to be some good PR done, right? And, you know, the dad may be a mobster or something, like there was a lot of accusations, then how would you clean that up, right? So then the son can get into the high school and therefore college he wants to go into. Uh, we've also worked on issues like, oh, hey, we sell a product. The people manufacturing that product has, you know, the, the uh, manufacturer has been set on fire and they can no longer manufacture the product. So then they upped the price of said product and kind of like price gorging, if you will. And people were very upset of that, of course. And then they were attacking the Facebook and the social media of the company. So many companies on a day-to-day -day basis may face small PR issues, if not larger PR issues. There are many, many things that can happen to a company. Now I'm going to address, I, I'm going to address uh, the completionist as a company of 20 people. Uh, where do we get the number 20 from? Uh, that is the number of mouths the completionist says he has to feed. So this is not a small company. Uh, most people have no idea how much you can make on YouTube. You can make a lot of money, right? Even this low small channel makes $16,000, $17,000 a year on just YouTube ad revenue. We've never done a sponsor. I've heard sponsors pay out five to 10 times as much as you would be making per CPM, which makes sense. And you might be like, oh, how do you know that number um, if you've never taken a sponsorship? Uh, one, I've been offered sponsorships. And two, for my clients on the marketing side, I've approached people similar to Gerard size and negotiated deals with them successfully um, without you know NDAs. I cannot tell you who they are, but they're there's some pretty big YouTubers and there's some, I would just call regional brands and not national brands. But um, yeah, that's the sponsorship. I've done it both, both sides, right? Um, I've done it for people like Carlos Correa from the Houston Astros, uh, from mostly athletes in the Houston area. And even a t entire teams like the Astros would do be like, you are the official blank blank of know the Houston Astros I've done those type of sponsorship deals and they are very expensive and they can cost quite a bit of money now back to Gerard and the completionist uh, let's imagine this is a company and the company CEO has gone in crisis mode uh, there is a charity component which is really important because the way to change the public perception about charity the reason that people don't like charity fraud is they think they're donating a dollar and that dollar is going to the abyss, right? Um, there's concerns about the golf tournaments. There's concerns that the money is not adding up. There are a lot of concerns here and it all comes down, in my opinion, to money. If I donate money to Gerard's charity, is it going to the right place or is it going to charity at all? And if it's just kind of sitting there for 10 years, did I lose the ability the cost of opportunity to donate to the charity directly, which would have been more beneficial because it would have 10 years to stew, if you will. And the answers, you no, know, I mean, these are really tough answers to have. They are very tough questions to have to a business, right? Because you never know. But there are some times a business just has to take an L and you have to sit down with the client and you have to say, you know what, there is only one way out of this and it's you got to pay the money. You got to pay the piper. You know, we made a mistake and that mistake cost charities X amount of money. And we said that we would donate to X and Y and Z charities and we're going to do that. That's what, so the concern, so when you're from a PR perspective, you have to address what is the concern? Why are people angry? People are angry is because the guy's been saying, oh, these donations are going to San Francisco research and we are their main donor and they they have to figure out, which is obviously not true, but um, people are upset because they think their donations are not going to the proper place or and are not being attributed to the full amount, right? When you promise somebody that every dollar goes to charity and then they find out, no, not every dollar went to charity 
and oh, it's been 10 years since that dollar has gone to charity. Then they get upset and it really comes down to the finances and the, you know, I think the easiest way to, and I would suggest this from a PR is just to pay out. Make sure that you pay enough money and, and you even even if you have to donate from your own pocket. I know it's scary, right? Oh, a, a person um, creating a charity for his dead mom has to donate from his own money, his own wallet. Um, it would save his business. It would at least save, I think, his business. So he does have a business. YouTube is a huge business. I don't think people really understand how large it is for a larger ch a channel of sponsors and so on. I imagine Gerard is probably making north of five, six million dollars a year in terms of sponsorships, videos, and opportunities, right? Um, he has 20 employees, right? Let's say it's, each employee gets paid minimal, probably 50,000. I think that's a very, very low minimal. 20 employees times 50,000 is a million dollars. A million dollars, right? I mean, that's a lot. That's just in employee salaries, right? And then, and, and that's again minimal. I'm sure that there are employees that are getting paid for significantly more than fifty thousand dollars a year. Then you got overhead, maybe some rent, maybe cost of equipment, and so on. This is a pretty big business. I, I don't think people can really understand how big of a business this is, um, and why Gerard needs to keep going. Initially, when this first broke out, a lot of people said, you know, the, the legal advice, oh, just keep quiet, just keep quiet. I knew he couldn't keep quiet for the part that he's a big YouTuber. We're not talking about a small, small YouTuber. We're talking about a large YouTuber who is making millions of dollars off YouTube, at, at the very least, millions of dollars on YouTube. And of course, he's got to keep it going. He's got to keep the money coming in because he's got employees. I know how that feels because I have employees and I have vendors. I have people, you know, I actually contacted uh, someone uh, recently and it's like, okay, cool. Where, where's the work product? There are issues a, a lot of times with um, having a business and the main issue is payroll is up, right? I mean, a business that doesn't make money, let's say any business, it doesn't even have to be a YouTube business, right? But YouTube is a business. A lot of people don't understand this. The videos they're watching are businesses. They are sponsored. They are, and this is what Carl Jobs has said, and this is what he's been criticized. I think wrongfully so, because every YouTube channel should be run like a business and is run. And the ones that tell you that they're not businesses, those are the ones that you got to be a little worried about because they clearly are lying to you. Um, YouTube is a business, right? Everyone is here trying to make money or trying to promote their own selves. Uh, if they're not promoting a VPN or a Raid Shadow Legends, they're actually just promoting their own YouTube channel and themselves. So I have to be really clear on this is everyone is doing making a YouTube video. You, so from a marketing perspective, you are the customer. We are the um, businesses and a a business with 20 employees has to continue making videos. That is their job. That's how they get sponsors. That's how they get paid. That's how they get money and the bank. And I believe the completionist was a very, very successful business model. Um, he was doing well and he had good videos and everything was hunky dory until the donations happened. And the $600,000 doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't seem like the right amount. That's my concern. Um, if he donated a million dollars, I would say, okay, there's no concerns here. He's covered everything and then some. And as a business model, he is probably making that much money. The, 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 the reason that people start charities should be to raise money, right? Including their own money, right? And their friends and family money into charity. Uh, it doesn't seem like, at least from initially, uh, the charity is doing that type of thing. So... Money, man, I mean, money is a, a, a really good, I mean, I, unfortunately, in the society we live in, money is very important in cleaning up uh, a mess, if you will. So when you're running a business and you run into a PR nightmare or a disaster, which Gerard is part of right now, you really have to get with the team, think of some ideas. You can't ignore it, and that's what Gerard seems to be doing. He wants to kind of do business as usual, but there is a factor, and it is a very 
bad factor is that there's this charity thing, alleged charity fraud, right? And, you know, and people are interested in it. People want to see your downfall. You know, they want to see you rise, but they also want to see you fall. And many people want to see you fall uh, more than they want to encourage your rise. And the same people who want you to rise are not the same people who want to see you fall. So it's really hard to convince those people. So I, I believe he's got to take a break. He's got to, but he can't take a break. And this is what I talked about initially, right? He should remain silent, but he cannot remain silent because then that, his YouTube career is over. Uh, and the same thing with his video. Why did he upload his video? Well, uh, if he's just going to get a bunch of negative feedback, which he knew he was going to get. He's not an idiot. He knows he's going to get the negative feedback. The answer is he has no choice. Uh, he absolutely has no choice. He had to upload the video. He had to get the views, the eyeballs on it. And maybe in the next video, he'll have a sponsor of some type of VPN or airplane game or whatever. Some type of gotcha game, maybe a Raid Shadow Legends, uh, a Ridge Wallet, right? If you, I ever wonder, like, why these people all have the same sponsors, right? It's always some VPN or some gotcha game, or because uh, those people make a lot of money from the. Con you you might you might be go. Oh, I would never do it. no, but some people do. Some people do pay a hundred dollars for a rent wallet, right? Because a YouTuber told them to. Um, I was watching that one YouTuber. Um, he was like a gaming YouTuber, and he got sponsored by Ridge Wallet, but somehow they didn't pay him out or something. And then he made a video anti Ridge Wallet, and then they paid him. And then suddenly he was back to making a Ridge Wallet video, saying, "Oh, it's really good. Things have worked out. They're a great company." That that's YouTube life, man. I mean, like you, you guys have to understand like how easy it is to buy people off on YouTube when they're career is dependent when 20 people's salary is dependent on you uploading this youtube video maybe you don't want to maybe you know the backlash will be very severe what choice you got you know you, you don't have a choice i mean you gotta upload a video and that is the savage nature of youtube youtube is a business foremost and all i mean it is you know once you reach a million subscribers you're making a decent amount of money uh to again to the point that you have 20 MP mouse to feed which we would assume as employees maybe there's like children involved i don't know i don't know how that's calculated but there is some amount of business that is being done at a level where gerard is in fact um running a larger operation youtube is a business man don't let anyone tell you not when they give that ridge wallet or what was that ftx right sponsorship when they do the established titles right where you can buy a land plot next to these things are obviously really bad deals for the consumer because they're not real right you're not actually getting a piece of land in ireland or wherever they say they're getting a planted tree or something on your plot of land um, but they, they have very little cost right uh if you understand like in the same thing with charity it's very little cost everyone's happy everyone's like oh man you're donating money to charity what a great organization um, it, it helps Gerard's channel, it helps his grow, it helps a lot of things. But the one thing that uh, you have to be aware of is you do have to take care and you do have to make sure everything's done properly and on time. Something Gerard failed to do and now he's living with the consequences. Anyway, bye guys.